ANEC has shifted the 2023 presidential election from February 18 to February 25, 2023. This is following the late signing of the Electoral Act by President Muhammadu Buhari. This was announced by the chairman of the commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, at a news conference in Abuja on Saturday. He said the presidential and national assembly elections will now be held on Saturday, February 25, 2023. Governorship and state houses of assembly elections will be held on March 11, 2023. Yakubi explained that the new date is to allow for conformity with the provisions of, of the electoral laws, which stipulate that elections uh, notice be published at least 260 days to the elections. He also said the electoral guidelines will also be published in due course. We're now being joined by Mr. Ahmed Bohari, is a spokesman for presidential aspirant, uh, Senator Ayim Pius Ayim. Mr. Bohari, good evening. Good evening. It's good to be here. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you too? I'm good. Thank you for joining us on our primetime news. Now, um, you, you, you heard that story and... Well, maybe I should say congratulations to you, congratulations to Nigerians on the signing of the uh, Electoral Act by the President. Congratulations to everyone. So, um, now the elections dates have been shifted from the presidential and the uh, National Assembly elections will no longer be held on uh, 18th of February, but February 25. So, uh, what, how do you think INEC is coping with this uh, electoral act? Um, first of all, I agree with you. We need, to, we need to congratulate ourselves. I'm glad that we were all working towards ensuring that this happens. The collective um, pressure from Nigerians all across the country and those living abroad has actually you know, push the president to sign in this bill. Even though he said he was going to sign the bill, I'm glad that the pressures that, we, that came from all of us together has uh, made him sign this bill. Uh, though there are still lots of areas that would want to see happen, I believe the infrastructure for that to happen will come in future. In the meantime, um, we're going to work with what we have, and I'm sure this is a process towards strengthening our democracy. What, what, the areas, has been what areas are you looking at? Because I was particularly excited about the disability clause in the, in the Electoral Act. I was particularly excited about that, that even uh, those who cannot see can be aided at the polling uh, booths. Uh, those who cannot hear can be aided with uh, communication uh, gadgets and all that, you know. So what areas, what other areas are you looking at? So there's going to be electronic transmission Absolutely. Um, of results um, wherever the infrastructure exists mm. because, again, that is very important that we note. Uh, a lot of people have been calling for running, how we could yeah. run this space the way it's been run in some other climates, but we must always remember that we do have our certain challenges that would undermine our ability to meet up with all of those uh, kinds of um, um, delivery of uh, this kind of processes. I would like to see how we can start voting online. I would like to see how we can vote from the corners of our houses. I would like to see that INEC generates a kind of code that will be yeah, unique to an individual. And with that code, you can actually you know, vote from anywhere in the world as long as you're in Nigeria. These things would have to happen. I would also be interested in seeing that just because I registered in Lagos, I'm not necessarily mandated to vote in Lagos. I can vote anywhere in the country. That's right. Wherever the voting period catches me or finds me, I do not have to start thinking of running back to my um, original place of registration to go and cast my votes. These are the kind of things that we would also like to see um, reintroduced into the, the, the act and see how it can accommodate all of us uh, moving forward. Okay, uh, now, uh, a clause that has been very controversial was uh, the one that says, okay, um, those in office, those in electoral offices cannot be voted for uh, and all that, you know, the, the, when the president says, okay, remove this clause before I sign it. How is your principal uh, reacting to that? Uh, Senator Ayan Pius, I am. Uh, Senator Ayan Pius, I am 
was one of the first people that uh, issued a statement congratulating Nigerians and also thanking Mr. President for, uh, you know, ascending to this act, to this bill, uh, because we all know that this has given us um, a stronger position to beat the APC at the polls. Uh, we had a question in my mind. This, uh, this will help eradicate some of those lacunas that have been lingering in our space. I'm glad that this has been um, addressed. And I'm also um, I'm still not very clear as to how soon or uh, at what point those uh, serving with the administration are expected to resign as soon as they as, as long as as soon as they making up their minds to contest. Um, whenever they when, whenever they have decided, oh, this is, I'm going to be contesting. Let us know exactly at what point in time the bill or the act clearly states where uh, they are their resignation from office because that would actually give a level playing field for everybody. They will not be having any upper hand because we know how it, how it works and how it happens. Uh, people have access to police, people have access to security personnel, people have access to even government funds and the collective resources of the people to use for their own personal individual campaigns. Okay, I'm now... Sorry, sorry, sorry to cut you there. Sorry to cut you there, uh, because I I know you can keep going on and on and on. Now, um, you, you could be the interviewer's delight any day, anytime. That's okay. But your principal uh, has been in uh, had been in government uh, for quite a while, for quite a long time, uh, since his youth. Uh, became Senate President at thirty nine. Uh, I recall. Now, what else is he bringing this time? He's bringing his experience. He's bringing a wealth of experience. He was not just the Senate president at 39. He got into the Senate at 37. Um, he still became the um, SGF, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation under President Goodluck Jonathan's administration. Um, he is one politician that has been around the corners of, um, you know, responsibility and how you expect it to be given to the system. Uh, being the secretary to the government of the federation, you know, it, it's like you're controlling the entire civil service. And at the time, you could tell how the government was faring. Uh, we were recording the highest GDP. We were recording some high numbers with the economy. We were recording some high numbers with our foreign direct investments. All of that seems to have vanished now. So when you look at that times, you, will, you want to ask who was the man in the middle of everything. And obviously, the secretary to the government of the federation runs all of those affairs. He's the engine room of the government. We must recognize the fact that that was where he was functioning from and some of those uh, positives were actually happening in the government. But I think what is even more crucial here is that um, after he finished as the Senate president, he, I mean, he had a chance to recontest, but he said, I've reached the peak of the National Assembly. Why would I be recontested? And he stepped aside and allowed other people to contest for, uh, uh, for somebody else to contest in his constituency for the office of this Senate. Um, so I think um, I think it's important we look into this individual. I think it's important we understand that um, that quest for power does not really linger in his mind. At a time like this, we are really clamoring for the Southeast to produce a, a president, and that is why he is awakening himself to say, I'm going to be um, available to represent the Southeast so that I can have a chance to prepare myself and feel for Nigerians a president that will be before all. Okay, one last question. If you'll answer this in less than 30 seconds, I'll be glad. Now, unemployment, poverty, insecurity, and the like, which ones or which one uh, would your principal tackle first if you had, if it was given the opportunity to rule this country? I think everything that you've just mentioned has a problem right now in the country, but the biggest problem we're facing in the country is leadership. We need somebody at the center that's going to steer the affairs of all of these arms of um, our daily social activities to ensure that we have a country that is working for all of us. Thank you very much, Mr. Ahmed Buhari, for joining us on our primetime news. Uh, we sure didn't have enough time. Hopefully, we'll get you back sometime soon uh, to talk more on... Uh, pressing issues like this. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.